So out there on the robber swings, we started planning our life together. Hand singing of metal and chain links, we first painted the pathways. I wanted a tiled runway, confident and secure to guide our aeroplane hearts home. But you wanted the path to be a meditation, curved and quiet so you can see the ginger and wildflowers growing in our front, a dirt path to keep you grounded. You swung slower than I did, toes skimming the ground while mine pointed to the sky. So I slowed and we compromised. We could have both, a path which mused and then rolled into surety. What about the house, you said? Huge. We'll put pennies together to create a mansion big enough for our memories, a room for each one, a house so big you have to take steps backward, open mouth, plus be your hat at the back of your head so it doesn't fall off when you eye it up and down. Plus, there'll be a chimney so laughter has room to fly and a reinforced steel attic stock full of supplies and weapons and entertainments so we could defend our house in the zombie apocalypse. He sped up and we swung in sync, lungs filled with the taste of possibility. But in all honesty, I said this poet and artist pair would only have a small goal pile to balance our Jenga house on. Taking pennies out now made the blocks unsteady. We slowed down again, our peeling seats feeling heavy. But. You said we'd compensate by having massive windows. We'd let the light in, let it settle, in chairs, across book spines, in bowls and spoons, in your hair and on my skin. Anything the light couldn't quite reach, we'd help it out and paint those parts yellow. Apart from the kitchen, of course, where fumes of pancake smoke and peppery chai and jazz and the ghost of spice, which would coat the white walls as they needed to, and the sounds of a kettle boiling like the final sigh after a long day. And I'd like to get our fit fridge magnets so we could create fun yet organised shopping lists. But one of us will probably spell out poo or bum and it will stay like that for weeks because it would make us smile every time we open the door and neither of us will want to move it. The artery hallways would lead to the living room where we'd have framed sketches and photographs and a mix of perfectly worn and completely unopened books with spaces pushed between the shelves to make room for more Buddha statues because obviously four in one room is not enough. And yes, there'd be my sprawl of papers and half-rolled socks that I'd taken off immediately after coming home from work, where they'd slipped into the valley of the sofas, which you'd inevitably find a little too close to your face about 10 minutes into your unsuspecting nap. The bath would be big enough for our elbows and knees, our insecurities, the bed would be good for that too. The third eye of the house, this room would have bundled clothes in various piles, promises you'll wear them again, and the walls would hold giggles and late night conversations tight like precious stones in closed palms, and we'd sleep under a skylight, with blinds we wouldn't ever close so we could always see the stars, and pretend that we're actually sleeping on a flat rooftop in the wild, bathed in the cool air. On unclear nights, we would watch the rain beat down only to change its mind and drip down the edges of the roof. And because you always fall asleep quicker than I do, the soundtrack of you sleeping would be a symphony I gladly conduct into the early hours, just so I could see it through, because it would sound like home more than these bricks ever could. And through the window, in the garden, past the slow-growing vegetables and forgotten kitchen towels still hanging on the washing line would be a set of swings, like the ones we're on now so that when we get there, we'll be able to look back from the other side and say, we made it. We swung faster and faster and, ready for the next stage in this adventure, let the swings push us forward and jumped, hoping to land on our feet.